Well, welcome to Smart Hints and Tips number seven. I'm Karen Bonanno and your host and presenter for this evening. And before we get underway, I just need to go through some basic housekeeping. For everybody here, it'll be my views um, that I will be presenting on the topic that I have uh, advertised for you. And it's imperative that you take this information and then you do some further investigation for yourself, in particular how you would be applying this to your particular school environment or to your particular workspace where you are. In addition, uh, it's important for you to know that the uh, EduWebinar does not give permission for any capture or recording or reproduction of this webinar in any format. Before I do begin, I do have to say to you that I am not an expert in guided inquiry. Uh, the experts are those authors that you see there on your screen for that particular publication and also to uh, their colleague, Dr. Ross Todd. The focus for this webinar is to provide an overview and also a review of the guided inquiry design process. For many of us, we've been strongly influenced by the work of Carol Coulthow in her research and also her guided inquiry publications. This most recent publication, I believe, really gets to the heart of how to effectively uh, apply guided inquiry within a school environment. The framework incorporates clear, user-friendly and easily understandable terms and phrases. Uh, and that was one of the challenges that I found, that the information search process, uh, words and documentation, I had difficulty trying to interpret that and apply that, whereas the guided inquiry design process that I'm going to share with you uh, in a review tonight, I believe um, really has brought the guided inquiry process into uh, practical terms. And the content of this book is very practical and it will assist many to effectively implement guided inquiry. Um, so much so that I've actually added the book to my recommended reading list um, on the Edu EduWebinar uh, site and you'll see the link there uh, where the toolkit is and the recommended readings list. Um, as the book states, uh, guided inquiry is a way of thinking, learning and teaching that changes the culture of the school into a collaborative inquiry community. And uh, I think that is aspirational and many of us need to embrace that, that really what we are on about within um, schools, uh, school libraries, in classrooms is encouraging students and assisting them to develop the strategies to take on some serious and deep level thinking uh, to engage in learning in a, an active and productive way for them and for teachers too to bring that, that quality. And the three authors who uh, write uh, these particular or this particular text bring together a powerful combination of skills. Uh, Carol brings in the re researcher and expert in school libraries. Uh, Leslie brings in the master teacher and the curriculum specialist. And then Anne brings in the outside expert in informal learning environments, particularly from her community and museum work that she does. So they really have brought together a really great team for the, this particular publication. The text presents the framework for designing guided inquiry within schools and it's an eight phase process and it's based on the model of the thoughts, feelings and actions in the Coulthau studies on the information search process of students. What this design uh, framework presents now is some very clear, understandable action words that will help us to make the connection with the thinking, the teaching and the learning that underpins inquiry-based process. So if we look at the first part, um, the open and immerse basically capture the attention first of the students uh, to get their engagement in an inquiry process. The immerse then helps them to build their background and knowledge. Explore uh, is fairly self-explanatory in that this is the time when the students are exploring the ideas, being mindful that they are not engaged in any research at this point. This is just getting them into an inquiry state of mind and getting them to uh, generate some ideas for thinking. Then in the next stage of identify, that's where they start to develop and articulate the inquiry question 
that is their question that they wish to pursue in an inquiry learning environment. Then the gather process is where they capture the information and then in the create and share is looking at sharing what they've learned, deciding what presentation format is most appropriate, then sharing what they learn and then the evaluate is the opportunity to engage in some uh, reflection not only on the learning but also on the particular process involved. Now this design framework is heavily uh, linked to the research that uh, Carol has undertaken and many of us would be familiar with the uh, information search process which describes the students process of how they learn. Uh, this model has been developed over several decades and Carol has been involved in a number of research programs that continue to gather sufficient uh, data that then exhibits the findings that this is really what happens with students and that each stage uh, calls for a different type of assistance and guidance through that um, process. Then recently in bringing in Leslie and Anne, they have brought in the research behind what is called study of the third space and that is where there is a crossover that occurs between the students real world experience um, outside the school and then their inside school curriculum learning. So on one side we have the students world and on the other we have the school world and then in the middle where they overlap we have the third space and this is where it is a strongly student um, learning centred environment in which students can engage. So effectively with the research that is behind guided inquiry and then also now with this recent publication, the guided inquiry design process, we've got some a very clear connection here and I'm just going to go through some of this um, and these is where I struggle, like the terms initiation, selection, exploration, formulation, collection, they were very much sort of academic uh, research uh, type words but now the very clearly understandable words that are action verbs um, really start to resonate with uh, how you would engage in guided inquiry. So the initiation process is the open section, the selection is the immerse, uh, the exploration is explore, the formulation is identify, the collection is gather, the presentation is create and share and then the assessment um, is evaluate. So it's uh, really quite clear where this particular framework is going. So what I'm going to do now is just go through each of the phases and give um, some basic material that, that I've read and been able to, to gather from the book as I've, I've engaged in that process. So in this first area of open, this sets the tone and direction of the inquiry and introduces the general topic to the students. So the session leads the students into a, a, an inquiry state of mind where they ask questions, uh, they generate ideas about a subject they're not actually researching at this point and this is a, a caution note that uh, Kulthau and the other authors, authors raise is that often uh, a teacher or someone will set a research assignment and then say well off you go to the library or off you go and do your research without really looking at whether the students have a, an understanding and prior knowledge and background and so in this um, opening phase it is basically needing to be quite powerful to invite them to start to inquire about a particular topic or theme. So the teaching team want to inspire the pursuit of inquiry, they want to spark conversation, uh, pose questions and problems, uh, help the students to think about the overall content, uh, connect with what they already know from their own experience and knowledge. So there's two elements that start to stand out here in this early phase of inquiry that I believe is a huge challenge because particularly when we're looking at the crowded curriculum um, concept or we're looking at people teaching to the curriculum, what happens here is first of all ideas are paramount in the inquiry process and the end product will be a reflection of the ideas that are generated at this first phase by the students. Also too, it's during this first phase that the students will start to arrive at that third space 
where they will create their own learning centred community. And in many respects, this should be the ambition um, of all school libraries, that uh, you start to look at how you can dominate that third space, that you can be that within the school community, that the uh, school library becomes that hub of learning and that place where the students are able to explore and investigate um, and engage in collaborative conversation. So in this first phase, the questions that are mainly asked is how can we gain the students' interest and curiosity? Uh, how can we ch change their attention from, you know, what does the teacher want me to do or or what does the teacher, or you know, how many words do I need to put in this assignment, or how many points does this, um, or marks do I get for this, all those sorts of things, to really a question of why this is important to me as a student. How relevant um, is this to my life? And in this opening phase, conversation is the key, and it's the king of this early part of the inquiry process. In the text that um, Kulthau and the other authors have written, they give the example right at the start of a session plan in this open um, segment. And the inquiry unit that they give as an example, um, the theme is water in our lives. And so to get the students started to think about that, uh, the teacher just basically holds up this bottle of water and asks the question to start the discussion, why do we, why do we um, put water in bottles and buy it from the store? So that's the question that is put out there to generate um, this initial phase of getting kids talking and engaging in the process. And so some of the questions that are discussed and explored is, you know, where does water come from? Uh, where do you get your water? When do you use your water? For what purposes? How much water do you think you use a day? And what if you didn't have water? What would be happening? And that just starts the, the students into an inquiry state of mind. The, the next stage then, is moving into immerse, and this is where um, through content and through particularly short and powerful learning events, um, and the emphasis here is not on overload, so it's not on giving them, bombarding them with all different varieties of sources and resources and everything else. You're just providing this one powerful learning um, event to start to immerse the students in the area where they're needing to develop their background knowledge. Now that can be through a short video, it could be through a physical object like the holding up the bottle of water um, and then going further with that, a photo, an artwork, a cartoon, uh, a, a, an excursion or a field trip, an article or a story. So the main task here is to get the students to start to connect to the content. So for the example for the bottle of water, a um, powerful learning experience might be to take the students on a field excursion to a um, you know, dam site uh, or to a uh, water storage facility or even to a factory where um, water is bottled. I mean, there's all sorts of locations that provide them with this um, background or this opportunity to discover interesting ideas around the theme that is being pursued. So it's at a point here that you're encouraging the students to reflect on their ideas that basically matter to them that they consider is worth pursuing. So for example, the strategies that you would use would be things like a KWL because in that process, uh, particularly for the latter part in you know, what I want to learn, it's really what are the ideas that I want to explore around a particular theme or a particular topic. And this is really what's happening is getting the ideas that they want to explore and it's through this immersion experience. And ultimately, it's what's in it for me uh, is what you're trying to expose to the students. So what are the ideas that they want to explore around the particular theme? Uh, in the text, Kulthau and the, the other authors give example strategy tools and they've got their inquiry circles. And this is particularly, as I said before, that a main, fa main element here or the key is to have students engaged in collaborative conversation and the inquiry circles is that particular structure. And then the other strategy they have are inquiry journals where students are capturing those ideas and their thoughts and what they might want to explore, what they already know, uh, what interesting ideas have been discussed in that particular stage. 
Then we move from the Immerse um, into Explore. And in this area here, the learning team is guiding the students to basically browse and scan through a range of information resources and basically to continue to explore the variety of ideas that they have generated in the earlier phases. At this point, it's exploring ideas rather than accumulating the facts. Uh, at, 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 any, at this point here, we are still not in the stage where the students are researching their, uh, their questions. They're actually just harvesting and gathering and capturing uh, this background knowledge and getting an idea of what is it that I really want to investigate here? What is it that I really want to explore? And so at this point, the students are just dipping in um, to make sense of what they're um, reading, seeing, hearing, uh, all those elements of engagement at a basic literacy um, competency level. So the strategies that um, are referred to um, is explore, pair, share, which is a change on the concept of think, pair, share. And again, all the time the students are being encouraged to work in this collaborative community of sharing information, um, of feeding off each other and, and continuing, continuing to add more and more to that process. Um, stop and jot is basically a strategy that they would use in the dip in. So if they're if they're reading something or they're viewing something or they're listening to something, if if something captures their thought, they just stop, jot it down, so that they then know where they can go back to uh, to review the, or, or or go back and revisit that information. And then the inquiry log is another strategy that's referred to in the text. The uh, following on then from the explore is uh, the next stage, which is identify. And this is where the students are starting to gel together their thoughts to look at what is the inquiry question that they want to start to explore. So they're identifying what is it that I want to explore, how much information will I need, what am I going to be looking for, where do I think I will find this. Uh, so they're deciding and focusing on their particular area that they want to explore. Uh, at this point, it's, it's constructing that inquiry question or questions from the interesting idea or from a pressing problem that they picked up through their early phases in the inquiry process or, or even emerging themes that they may have found as they went through and looked at various sources of information. The teaching team, and in this book, I'll, I'll just uh, pause here a little bit myself to say in, in the book, it, it outlines the type of teaching team. Uh, there's the, the core teaching team of the classroom teacher and the teacher librarian. Uh, there may also be an extended teaching team which may bring in a specialist within the school. It could be someone from uh, English as a second language or it could be from another, another um, discipline or, or speciality within the school. And then they go to beyond that teaching team where there might be points of time when you would bring in a guest uh, and that may be that powerful learning event where that guest is sharing with them an experience that then provides them with the background knowledge that they would need. So that's in that immersion process that you would bring in a guest in, in that particular uh, place and space. But here, uh, the strategies that are being used now uh, is basically enabling the students to sort through the information ideas and to start to clearly articulate the inquiry question that they want to explore. Now many graphic organisers that you would be familiar with can be utilised here. Uh, so it helps the students to sort of sort things out, get things in some type of order, uh, work out what type of keywords they're going to put together from the information and thoughts and ideas that they've gathered that they can then use to start to engage um, in the process. So the next step um, is moving then uh, to apply that inquiry question across a range of different types of resources and, and sources of information where they then now start to uh, collect detailed information that addresses their inquiry question. This is where we see a lot of the uh, information literacy skills start to emerge where they're locating, uh, they're selecting, they're evaluating the information and then they're uh, uh, using it to put it in some sort of order of how they think they might then uh, put together their stream of thinking for doing their presentation. So they're also looking at citing material here, making sure they get their bibliography information 
and that's captured then through those strategies that you, you see there on the screen of the inquiry log and the journal. Uh, so they're able to look at uh, getting that, those citations in place, uh, you know, ticking off where they might want to go broad and that's uh, looking first at a range of resources. So it, it doesn't mean that they're just looking at one or two, they're actually looking at a, at a range of, of sources and then the next step is to go deep and by that the, uh, the Coolthow and the authors basically say that they choose some core things to read more closely uh, for what is personally meaningful for them and then that's when they're really capturing that detailed information in that particular process. The next stage um, on Create is really getting them to start to organise their learning into a creative presentation that will match the audience. So in this process one of the strategies is to, you know, what is an, an authentic audience for the information that they wish to share uh, or the ideas or their thinking that they wish to communicate. So what type of presentation is the best to use to communicate my thinking to a particular audience and that's what they're starting to do here and reflecting on that integrating the ideas that they have um, sourced and, and, and captured and here the, the learning team's role is to guide them beyond the facts, uh, get them to move into some of the uh, higher level thinking so if people are using blooms within their school you know you're starting to look at the analyse uh, aspect there and the evaluation of the information, uh, your, uh, the kids ability to interpret their ability to extend the meaning, their ability to basically look at how they start to create and put together the words or the presentation, uh, whether it be a visual or whether it be text, whatever they choose, but it's them putting together that particular process. And all the time through the inquiry, uh, community is maintained. So it's it's always, and even, even with the teaching team, they're modelling the process as well in that they're conversational, uh, they're collaborative, they encourage the students, the students are also engaged in that collaborative conversation process, which, you know, for many it may be uh, rather odd and often, uh, you know, teachers will try to encourage students to work more in an isolation process, but the guided inquiry framework and the designing process here that Coolthow and the authors share, other authors share, is, is very much a conversational and, and students learning from each other and, and sharing that information. So in the um, next stage is where they then actually share their insights um, and they contribute to the learning of others. So as an inquiry group or an inquiry community, and if we go back to what they state right at the start, that it's thinking, teaching, learning to develop a culture within the school that is an inquiry community. Here the students are extending this now whereby they are the experts actually um, on their inquiry question. So they're telling their story of what they have learned as um, they have gone through the process and they're sharing their insights and they're also contributing their learning to others in that process as well through uh, what the authors describe as an inquiry product and that product can be in, in many formats and it depends on how the student chooses to present their information according to the audience that, that they have chosen. So here what's happening is that the students are addressing this collaborative learning and they're connecting it to a common theme that is uh, embedded within a curriculum content process. The latter stage, uh, and this is not in any way a step in isolation or a phase in isolation, this particular aspect of Valuate happens throughout the whole student production of evidence as they progress through each phase. So if you think back to where they would, were using the inquiry journal or they were using a um, stop and jot or they were using a graphic organiser or a cluster map, all those sorts of things, all those particular um, capture of their thinking, of their background knowledge, of their ideas, of the way that they constructed their inquiry question, all of that is basically also captured along the way and is part of this evaluation process for the students. So not only are they um, reflecting on the content 
in that they're doing some self-assessment of their understanding of the content and the meanings that they have created. They're also looking at a self-reflection tool that looks at how they've progressed through that inquiry process as well. And this is where the learning rubric comes in and many of you would be familiar with those particular type of tools uh, to get the students to be able to uh, look at their assessment against um, content but also then a self-reflection tool. And as I said, in the text there are examples of these particular tools that um, can be used and they're designed around uh, making sure that the design inquiry process is incorporated into that particular makeup as well. In the book as well, um, they do cover the five kinds of learning and in fact the learning rubric that I referred to before as a strategy for that evaluation process. In the text they actually outline a rubric uh, that incorporates all of these and the thing that we need to look at here is particularly of those who are from Australia this evening who are on the webinar, these kinds of learning actually start to capture the general capabilities of the national curriculum. If you've had the chance to have a look at that, you'll see that uh, there are some similar terms, but also too, um, I'll just share with you some of the basics that, that the authors cover. For instance, curriculum content is this whole knowledge construction and it's the applying of facts and ideas so the students develop their own meaning of that curriculum and its relevancy to them in their own life. Information literacy I think goes without saying that that brings in the various skills of locating, selecting, evaluating, organising and using information. The learning how to learn is utilising the strategies that the teaching team either models or introduces to the students and it's using those strategies to engage in an inquiry process and they're then able to look at that self-direction in future topics that they have already some very worthwhile strategies that they've been able to apply and see and seen how they work. Then there's the literacy competency and that is really but very basically that's reading, writing, speaking, listening, viewing, drawing, presenting. Um, you know, really core level essential literacy competency is developed through this process as well. And then the social skills um, are definitely developed through uh, conversation, through collaboration, uh, interaction with others and also cooperation uh, with students as they're working in their inquiry group or their inquiry community. So I'm just going to, I'll just go to the next slide because in the text, uh, you know, the new text about uh, designing guided inquiry, design a framework for inquiry in your school. They do um, clearly indicate that the companion text and encourage people to read that as well is the uh, guided inquiry learning in the 21st century that was published in 2007 and that forms a basis and, and a core element and, and the design of the text is very familiar and they introduce uh, information again in, in this latter publication to reinforce what's covered in that early early text. Well, we'll just go to questions and see if anyone has any questions and as I said right at the very start, I am not an expert in guided inquiry. This evening is really, uh, was an opportunity to introduce folk to the recent publication that has just come out that looks at the phases, looks at developing that really that really common language that captures those action verbs like open, identify, explore, immerse, key elements there. Uh, comment here, I much prefer the action words mentioned here that describe the original steps in the ISP, much more meaningful to students and, and I agree totally. I, I really think uh, that you know it's really come of time, this is a pinnacle moment and it really helps to make it easy regardless I think of the age bracket uh, you know using words like identify, immerse, explore all of those are terms that can be used from uh, elementary through to secondary in that process and it's a nice uh, framework it's got some nice icons that go with it and we're going to you know see more of, of this appearing and being supportive 
uh, for that particular process. And another comment here, it's a no-brainer to introduce this at the time that the Australian curriculum is embedding itself in schools. Most definitely touches on the general capabilities and thank you for that. Uh, and I do encourage you that you go to that Australian curriculum site for those people who are here who are from Australia. There are other people from other nationalities but you know, it won't hurt for you to have a look at the um, Australian Curriculum General Capabilities or look at what may be in the curriculum processes for yourself. So if, if we've got US people, uh, look at those, um, you know, those core uh, common standards. Uh, is the gather stage, are there any suggestions of how to help students to take in information from the research without plagiarising? Basically, um, the answer to that is in the text they have some templates that you can use and it's really important that if you're familiar with some of the terms that Coolthow use is this zone of intervention and this is where the teaching team would be uh, modelling the process for the students and helping them to see how paraphrasing may be something that is um, more in vogue because they can take it and, and work it around and get their ideas. So it's really a case of looking at the tools that are in the book at this particular stage of gather to basically help students to avoid that plagiarism. The big focus is it has to be on going back and getting them to revisit what is the inquiry question that I have generated that I want to answer with the information that I'm going to be finding at that gather stage. Um, we're always going to be kind of plagued, I guess, with this plagiarism aspect. But if we try to get the kids to focus on the learning rather than just producing something uh, and generating that curiosity right at the start where we're looking at what is meaningful you, what about this is relevant to your life that you want to actually get in and explore um, a pressing problem or uh, you know, an interest area that you've got going right back and, and making sure we've got the right immersion in that process. We currently use the information research process to find, locate, select, organise, present and assess. Are these not similar to the new terms? The question here is what are you doing at define? Um, are you getting the kids right there at the define stage to be defining their inquiry question? Because if that's what you're doing at that stage, how do you know whether the students have sufficient background knowledge about the topic? If you're using define there in the sense that you're getting them to define the topic and the scope and the theme and that you're getting them to develop their background knowledge, then yes, these could be similar terms. So I think you really need to look at what you're actually asking the kids to do at define. Uh, if it's just, okay, here's the research assignment, off you go, and the kids are trying to define what they're going to look at for their keywords, um, that they're going to start entering information into a search engine or an online database. That has to happen a little bit later. The concept behind uh, the guided inquiry and the inquiry-based learning is really to immerse the students and get them engaged in inquiry, get them curious about what's going to be explored. That's, that's what's happening there. On a practical level, might you offer any tips to successfully implement this in a school where the principal, new TL and staff are open to it but have never done it before and the TL only works part time? Very interesting question and I don't have an immediate answer for practical tips to, to help you do that except to say that, and I'm going to probably reveal my age here a little bit, some of you may remember the days when it was called, or, or we, what not it, this was called, but we were engaged in CPPT, Cooperative Planning Program and Teaching. And when we all graduated from our course, we went out there like Bodicea and we were going to conquer the world with this great new um, cooperative planning process. And then you'd get to the school and reality would hit and you would realise there was no way you could be totally rolling this out with all the staff, every class, across the school. And I think the same applies here, that you begin to work and if you're only there on a part-time basis, you work with one, one teacher or you work with a, a, a teaching team or you work with a particular year level and you allow things to gain momentum 
through that particular process. So whatever you're using in your school now as a framework for getting kids to engage in inquiry learning, because the national curriculum um, is very much an inquiry learning environment. It has actual strands on inquiry. So for those in Australia, be aware that, that you've got that pathway um, there as well. A question here, uh, how do you explain that in 21st century schools there are any reference to school libraries as an important building educational environments? Uh, I'm not quite sure what, what the essence of your question is, whether it's that people don't see school libraries as part of 21st century schools. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what, what you're, what you're uh, trying to, to explore here, but really it's a case of my comment would be if school libraries don't see themselves as part of the program development and curriculum design around 21st century schools, then you're in a very, very dark, dark place. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely crucial that the school libraries start to even take a leadership role in this, in this process and become the, the space where it can be drawn together that they can be looking at um, developing or supporting some complex processes within the school for how curriculum can be engaging uh, content for students through that inquiry uh, process as well. Uh, comment, Ross Todd says, don't water the rocks. Uh, that is, support the teachers that really want assistance first, start small and showcase the results. Yes, thank you for that. Um, that's uh, and I can assure you that comment comes from somebody who uh, in their school is, is fully engaged in the inquiry process. So you, you start um, small, you engage with teachers who are keen to pursue this, uh, you get them involved and you start to work together. And it's like um, you know, you, you're throwing a rock into a pond and you're just letting uh, the ripple effect go out. Uh, and Basically, you know, one can ho one can only dream, I guess, or, or even have the ambition that as more and more people engage in this process of looking at that guided inquiry, that teaching team, the students actually getting into that learner-centred third space where they are making the connection through facilitation and guidance from the teaching team between their world and that of the curriculum, then I think we can start to see that there's going to be some vibrancy happening in the type of people that are employed in schools to be able to lead this, develop this, guide this, facilitate this within a school community. Now I'm just going to um, actually go on and uh, I will review these questions. So if I've missed something, I will get back to you uh, and, and have a a response to you for that. But I just want to go into looking at uh, some of the tools that can be used to support this process. And this is the first one that I, I looked at, which is called Bubble Us, and some of you may be familiar with it. But what it actually does, it allows you to start to create that concept map. And, and this could be something that you could project up, could be something that's shared by the whole group, right at that very early phase of opening the discussion and getting kids to explore various things about the particular topic or the subject that you're wanting to do. So with this you continue to build it, um, it's a fairly simple process to do that and at the end you can print it, you can actually export it as an image or you can even export it as a web um, outline. You can import um, content as well. Uh, it's, it's really quite a simple tool as a free as the first um, level, it's f there's a free aspect of it, but then if you want to go into more of the utilities, like for instance over here on the right, the sharing and the working in groups, then you do have to purchase the resource and it's about 60 US dollars a year for that. Now what I'm going to do is see if I can just, um, all being well, go into this so that we can see it. It does require um, Adobe Flash, so the very first time that you go to use it, it will say, um, you know, please uh, set up or, or allow the setting to talk to um, Adobe Flash. Let's see if I can get in here and just show you. 
you can use it without actually starting an account, um, but I've, I've played around with this, with that initial program that is in the text on water in our lives and uh, just started to fiddle around with it myself. So the water in our lives is the theme and then looked at the questions. Where does water come from? Where do I get, uh, where do you get your water? Uh, what if I didn't have water? Those sorts of things. Now, when you're doing this, you can, you can, you can shift things around. So where do I get water from? I mean, you can pick up the tap and bring it over here so it, it comes into there. Um, you can actually um, control enter and you can add, um, you know, you can add extra, extra text in there as well. So, you know, there's, there's all different ways and then you can use this to build and even the students could use this as well, particularly when they get to the point where they're trying to um, uh, look at identifying their, their inquiry question or even when they're trying to sort out the information that they've got into some kind of order. So that's that's Bubble Us and as I said there's the free aspect which you can see here and then if you pay the uh, 60 US dollars you then get more aspects there where you can start to to share your resources. Another tool is called Text Mind Map and it's a very simple tool in that all you're doing is you're adding your text uh, into this area here and you're just using the tabs to work out how you're going to make those particular uh, organisational connections to that process. So if we go into that one, um, so in this one here I could just come into here and I could go months of the year in Australia. Um, um, it isn't spring, what, what have you got? This is uh, autumn, if I can spell. Um, then we've got winter and then spring. Um, and then summer. And when I say draw the map, it will just then change itself. And you can basically um, shift this around if you're wanting to move uh, things around and you're wanting to add extra tabs in there. So it just works on a simple process of entering the terms and then you just tab in according to the, the way that you want to start from uh, the parent, which is the center point, and then um, you know the, the kind of sib the sibling and then and it goes through. So that's another simple tool that uh, is a free tool that you can use. You also have options where you can change the colors, you can change the fonts. Then other web tools that support the inquiry process, and I'm, I'm not going to go into these, uh, but some of these are free. Some of them um, have f a free component and then they have a purchase component. And most of them are reasonably affordable uh, either as a purchase or as a monthly subscription. Uh, Spider Scribe is one, uh, Mind Meister is another and, and there's a paid component to that. But an interesting thing that I found was on Wikipedia there is uh, mind mapping tools and at that particular link that you see there in front of you, it does actually list a range of different free software tools on mind mapping as well as tools that uh, are available for purchase as well. So there's a, a number of different tools that can be used and those tools can be used not just uh, for the early phases of the process of, of the design process that has been developed here by Kulfau and, and the other authors, but it's uh, also able to be used used as a process of just creating the curiosity and capturing the thought and then saving that so that students can, can go back and revisit that in the process as well. So we'll just uh, go back to looking at questions again uh, to see if anything's come through here. Has anyone got any tools that they find that work well, for, particularly for those folk who have been engaged in using the uh, inquiry, guided inquiry process in the schools? Has anyone got any tools that uh, they find um, are really valuable, particularly for capturing the attention of the students? Uh, other tools that people are sharing here is um, Wallwisher. There are um, also inspiration for mind mapping and there are video clips and yes, 
basically you can go onto YouTube and you can pretty well key in a lot of this. So you could key in, you know, how to use uh, MindMeister and you'd find that there'd be some YouTube uh, videos there. Another tool that someone has used is uh, Poplet. You can use text, images and insert videos and it's free and you can change the font. Thank you very much for that. The question here, and, and I don't have the answer, maybe um, Sharon might be able to answer that. Uh, could Warwisher be part of brainstorming and kept as a record? So if someone who's used Warwisher, if you can uh, make a comment on that, that would be great. Um, I use Bubbleus and I use uh, and I use Web Inspiration. So there's a few tools there that uh, people are using. And, and in some cases, some education um, sectors have uh, purchased certain uh, mind mapping tools for use in the schools. Uh, the comment about wall wisher, not sure if it can be saved. Uh, or I always take a screenshot. Thank you for that. Thanks, Sharon. Simple Minds on iPads is great mind mapping tool. So you can see, folks, there's lots of tools out there and it's really a case of uh, looking at what you can use uh, within your school system. Uh, the last smart hints and tips I shared uh, the instant Instagrok, and there were some systems that really wouldn't um, support that. There was also web browsers, and we found that uh, if your system only supported a certain web browser, then it would be uh, literally impossible for you to use that particular tool, uh, which is a kind of search tool that again um, expands out in a mind mapping environment as it seeks and, and sources information off the web. So. There are lots of tools there and I think they're great if we can actually, uh, you know, as a teaching team you would kind of demonstrate and model how they're used, then get the students to start to explore that in an environment where they get the chance to share and collaborate, providing that facility where they are working together to generate their ideas and share their learnings. There's all sorts of uh, opportunities that can be made available here and I really, I really enjoyed um, delving into this particular text because um, you know, I've read a lot around the research uh, that Carol has done and the many studies whereby she has f captured the findings that support that information search process and the whole sort of effective aspect, the cognitive aspect, all of that that forms part of the emotions that students go through in the uh, way that they would undertake a research uh, assessment or research assignment task. All of that is, is a very strong basis for this particular design uh, inquiry phase process that, that's in this particular text. So if, uh, if you folk are, are wanting to explore that, and it may be that some of you might be using um, Blooms within your school, it really is a, a case where I can see that there are the opportunities for being able to integrate that into this particular process as well so that students are able to develop their skills, uh, look at the, st the strategies, use some of the tools that support um, Blooms, all of that can come into to play as well. Uh, just some closing comments here that, that folk are just putting in. The interesting aspect for me was the dip in feelings of success um, at the middle stages. Uh, yes, so students when they're dipping in, uh, basically in that process they're also um, really exploring what they want to explore at that point of uh, getting into that particular environment and investigating what they see as is important and relevant for them within an inquiry frame of mind. So just to uh, end off uh, the evening, I just need to go through or just go beyond questions. As I said right from the start, the uh, PowerPoint presentation and also too with Smart Hints and Tips, because these are free webinars, the replay is also available as well to uh, folk who uh, want to come back and revisit the, uh, the session as well as you know, there's, there's conversations, there's sharing of information, there's the interaction that I have with you people as you uh, put the questions in or as you share your own experiences. So within about five to seven days, the PowerPoint presentation and the webinar replay will be available on the link that you see there in front of you. Uh, members of EduWebinar actually receive some additional resources 
information and tools to support the content of uh, the broadcast. So if you are a member, uh, you should log in and access the webinar replay via the members section of the site. And uh, if you're um, not familiar with what uh, features are available in the membership aspect of the site, that web link will set those out for you so that you can see what's involved in that process. Uh, basically, each month uh, we host live webinars like this one. Uh, we always work on having a free event, uh, but also too we have paid events uh, that are, you can either come in as a one-off payment for the session if you find it interesting. Uh, so you can check in and see what future events are going to be presented at the uh, edgywebinar.com AU web webinars uh, link there. There's also my email um, if you're wanting to pursue uh, anything a little bit further in that process. And thank you for uh, joining me and I hope that you've picked up some key ideas and thoughts and been inspired to uh, pursue this particular aspect of the further developments of how a guided inquiry is unfolding and really connecting and resonating with what's happening within schools. So folks, I look forward to seeing you again online soon at an another webinar event. And so it's a uh, good evening uh, from me and enjoy uh, the ongoing learning that you are engaging in to develop your skills and expertise. So good night for now and we'll see you soon online.